Hi everyone. Today I thought I would do this absolutely adorable door. I just love colouring doors and when I did my little flip through of Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, which this is, I just wanted to colour this door. So that's what I'm going to do. And you're going to join me, hopefully. Now I've got my um, Castle Art Botanical set because there's lots of browns and greens and things. I think it will just suit this picture. We do need to think about the sort of background as well. But I'm just going to start with the door. I'm going to start with using the yellow ochre and I'm just going to do a layer, a light layer of that on the frame and the door. You'll see what I'm doing later and on this bit. I just want to get a sort of base layer down. I'm not going to do it on these hingy bits. Let's just go down there. Those, uh, those won't be this colour. But uh, all of this will be wood. So this is our sort of basic wood. When you're doing wood, it's actually a good idea to colour it in that direction because, well, whichever direction you want the wood grain to run in, and I think it would be this direction. Now I haven't used um, Castle Arts in, in my previous Ivy book. I think I used all polychromos. So it's nice to use something different. Now my last Ivy book, I did all the Dragon Queen's pictures, all Ivy's, all the butterflies in the same colour so it's consistent through the book and I wrote them down in my um, sketchbook which colours I'd used for which and always went back to those colours. Actually Ivy I remember was in Stedler thinking about it, Stedler Ergosoft. But um, I'm not going to do that in this version. In this version I'm going to give myself free reign so I can use any colour I want. I think it would be more fun because what I did with my last one is I coloured the butterfly and then I didn't like it and then I had to keep colouring it the same colours that I didn't like. I don't want to do that, make that mistake again so uh, I'm going to not. So there's a basic wood, it's not very even or neat but I don't mind because we're going to go over it. Now I'm going to go over I'm going to go into the edge of the door here first with a darker colour. Sorry, this is the um, um, raw umber. So, uh, and I just want to mark that out because I want to make this look slightly three dimensional so that the door frame is, <coughs> excuse me, got a frog in my throat. So the door frame is sticking out slightly because I think that's how it would be. So we're going to try that all the way around and hopefully that will work. We may um, go over that in a darker colour. Now this is a bit odd at the bottom, it's, it's quite thick. I don't know if this is meant to be the door frame really or whether this bit is the frame but anyway this is how I'm doing it now. So I'm going to bring that down a little, away from the centre, away from the edge, I mean towards the centre, sorry, not making much sense. And here, and here, it's been rather nice to have a different book to colour in, as much as I absolutely love Worlds of Wonder, and I'm not going to stop colouring that, to uh, be able to do some videos that are a little bit different. So I, I don't know whether you're getting bored of Worlds of Wonder and um, doing my planner on a Monday, it's a bit of a change. So around the window frame I want to also do a similar effect, try and make it look more three dimensional. So I'm going in quite hard but I want it slightly darker at the bottom to make it look like the light is coming from above. And same with the door handle. So I'm going to do it all the way around, but a bit thicker underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. And here, underneath our hinges. So 
so all the way around but thicker on those bits underneath I like these pages in Ivy where you've got little things to colour. It's uh, they're good for videos, I think. Whole pages are too long. There are brilliant people who do whole page videos already. I don't think I need to do those for you. I I thought I would do something a bit different and just do smaller things. Whether I do all of the things on this page or not, I don't know. Depend on how popular this video is, probably, and uh, how I decide to do them. So there's um, that. We've sort of outlined everything. I hope you can see. It's a little bit difficult to zoom in um, so that you can see the whole thing. Maybe I can zoom in just a little. Oh, it doesn't like me zooming in anyway. There we go. Now, the glass. I've got to think about is it going to have a nice welcoming shiny like or is it um, going to be sort of cold and grey I'm just having a look I'm trying to look at the story a little bit and see whether um, oh it's the castle dungeon door mmm no we'll make it grey so we'll grab our panes grey and we'll do a few sort of stripes across like that and it looks um, a bit glassy that's the idea now we need to do these door handle and brackets um, as well now I'm thinking a silvery colour will work so I'm keeping my panes grey in my hand but I'm applying it more gently so on the edge here it's my darkest part going to fade it here, grab, put, make it a little bit darker here and fade it here, darker and then start to fade and we'll leave a little white there and hopefully that looks a little bit metallic. Now if you wish you can use a, a silver pencil, a silver gel pen, something like that. I'm doing the same thing here, so darker on the edges and then starting to fade. But I like giving the impression of silver and gold with my pencils. I haven't tried to do it with these castle arts, so it's quite an interesting um, experiment. So I've left that bit white and that bit white. And with the door handle, I'm thinking it'll be darker here, we've got like a shadow. Plus this is like a door knob. So it's going to be dark on the outside and it will catch the light in the middle like that and I'm thinking maybe it will shine in the dire same direction as this so let's make it lighter in some areas and darker in others like that there okay now I'm going to go in back to the door I haven't finished the, the uh, main part of the door yet with my dark kiss brown which is the burnt umber and I'm going to start marking out um, some parts so firstly I'm going to emphasize this shadowing just by going over just this edge bit I'm not going to do it on all of the areas just the um, just this bit Okay, and now these lines that are going down here, I'm going to go over the top of these, hard pressure, where there are dots, I just go over, because I can't do little dot details with a pencil. You could use a, um, a fine liner pen for this. And now what we're doing is emphasising the fact that it's wood and that there are separate panels of wood in the door as Johanna has drawn it. And, uh, but for me that isn't enough of a wood effect the door still looks too smooth so what I want to do is do some little lines through the wood to make it look a bit more woody I'm going to sharpen my pencil 
to a sharp point if I can and then we're going to follow the same direction but do some small lines all over like this I hope you can see what I'm doing trying to keep them as fine as I can Oh, such fun. I do so love doing doors. I don't know why. See, interestingly, my aunt likes doors and doorways. She um, likes taking photos of them when she goes on her travels. Well, she's not travelling at the moment. Not many people are. But she um, used to travel the world and see all sorts of beautiful architecture when her children were little. Before I was born I think. She hasn't travelled much lately but she's hoping to come to the UK sometime which will be lovely but uh, we have to wait until everybody's safe and everything else and wait and see. Right so we've now got a little wood grain effect I hope you can see that. Now the other thing I want to do is on this sort of battle knee piece around the edge of the door I want to um, just slightly darken each edge to make it look like it's slightly rounded. Now I'm not going to use this really dark burned umber because um, we've used that on the inside to create the shadow so I don't want to use it again or else it might, our shadow won't be emphasised so I'm using the raw umber instead and what I'm going to try and do is just go over the top of Johanna's lines that she's drawn on the very outside and inside of this. And hopefully it will just give the impression that this is not just a flat um, piece around the frame of the door and it's quite simple and it usually works quite well so fingers crossed that it will work this time it's always quite difficult until you finish to see whether it has worked oh, that was a bit narrow so it came together it's a bit easier down here And here, and then I can sit back and think. Yeah, I think that worked quite well. I'm just going to bring it in a little bit on the bottom though, because uh, we've got a little bit more room, so I'll just fade it in a bit. There we go. Now we have got around the edge of this door, we've got these circular shapes. Now I am thinking that they are a little gemstones but this is a dungeon so I'm thinking are they black shiny gemstones just just you know to give you a bit of a warning now they're sitting around them is are these little gaps I'm going to do these in the panes grey as if it's a sort of cement I'm going to do it quite dark because I want it to look different to the window and the handle and all those other items that we've also done in grey so I'm going to push down quite hard here it doesn't matter too much if I go over the edge of the round parts because they're going to be black but be careful on the door frame etc now I'm also thinking about what is this behind this door it's supposed to be a dungeon door so what is this behind it is it in a must be in a wall so we need to think about how we're going to color that we've got these lovely leaves but um, what's that wall what's it going to be like is it um, is there a brick wall do we need to draw in bricks or is it just a painted wall or is it covered in moss so it'll be green just having a think about that wall colouring in all these little gaps 
I mean, we could do it this grey colour but we've got a lot of grey going on so I have to have a think that one's a bit squished isn't he I'm wondering whether black's going to be a bit sombre but as I say it's a dungeon door so maybe they would really just be stones not gems but I want to make them gems I think they'll look nicer more fun sorry this is a bit fiddly taking a while to do but uh, Hopefully not too boring. So, yeah, I'm going to grab my black. Now, with these black um, gemstones, I'm not going to do just to hold black. I'm going to do them darker on one side than the other. And just fade them out a little. Hopefully it will you'll be able to see that they're a bit lighter on one side than the other. I'm just doing that because I think it gives more of an impression of shine. remembered I need to check my bank balance. Isn't that exciting? I thought I'd inform you all of that exciting fact. <laughs> I've been meaning to do it since earlier. I keep forgetting. I don't think anything exciting is going to happen in there though. I just like to check it every so often. See what's going on. I haven't had much work lately so I haven't been paid. But uh, that's okay. Um, it's given me time to film lots of videos, which is good. And I've been thinking about other ways to make money, so that's been fun. And my husband works full time and earns plenty. So we're extremely fortunate. We never have to worry if I'm out of work. And actually, he's usually quite pleased if I've got more leisure time. So I'm making these darker on the left, all of them. And I'm going to go in with the gel pen after and highlight them all as well to make them look really shiny. Hopefully they'll look more gemstone-like. But even if they just look like normal stones, that's okay. Right, I've got that down. I'm going to grab my gel pen, which is this one, and just do a little mark, some marks on each one. A little shine mark. Go. I'm not sure how gemstony they look. They've sort of faded into the into the um, the grey background, haven't they? Don't really look that gemstony, but hey ho. 
we'll move on to some leaves anyway now I'm going to yeah I'm going to do the viridian to start with on the leaves um, I need to sharpen that a little bit oh, wrong hole in the sharpener excuse me and my plan is to do these stalky bits with this dark green and then part of the oak leaves it's quite dark for an oak leaf isn't it this just a little bit and then I'll grab a lighter colour for the rest so none on that one because it's just the top maybe just a touch on this one these aren't oak leaves um, hmm. I think I'll do them the same colour anyway. I just think it'll look a little bit... Oops, missed that one out. Getting ahead of myself then. Of course, another option I have is for the background on this to be the same as the background on all of the other little pictures on this page. I could do that. I don't know if that will work though. So. Just keeping an eye on the time, making sure it's not time for the children to come home. It's because uh, I'm filming this in advance. They would have already finished school by the time this video gets put up. But. Uh, the holidays for them but I'm filming in advance because when they're on when they're here I can't film so um, it, uh, it's better to try and do them in advance as much as I can otherwise I have to send them upstairs or something while I'm filming and it feels mean so uh, I'm just trying to get way ahead Okay, that's that layer of viridian, and I'm going to grab the um, oops, the oxide of chrome to uh, add the next layer. So I'm going over the top of the viridian, then taking it up towards the top. I'm going to add one more colour to those oak leaves but these I'm going to keep this dark so I shall take this right to the top and then they'll look a little bit different from each other So on this one again, I'm not taking it all the way to the top. I'm hoping that gel pen's dry because I'm running my hand through it by mistake. There we go, and lastly, I'm going to go in with the, oh you couldn't see the top, oh gosh, I'm sorry, hang on, there we go, oh it's not too bad, sap green, so this is just for the oak leaves, I'm going to go over the whole leaf in the sap green. There 
we go. And I'm still thinking hard about this background. I'm thinking, is it going to be um, green? Because it's a sort of foresty picture, isn't it? So I'm wondering whether to pop some green in the background and it can maybe look like there's more leaves and I think that will look give it some more warmth compared to doing it sort of grey bricks we've got so much grey and black going on so those were not going to go over in the sap green so what I'm going to do is use a very light green this is the leaf green light background. It's really pale but I'm not going to leave it as the only colour unless actually I might do. I think that's looking rather nice. I'll see how it looks. I was thinking I might want to tone it down with a ochre or something but I don't know. I might just like this. Let's see how it looks when I'm done. I can't, um, I can't visualise in my head how it's going to look. I've just got to put the colour down on the paper and be daring and then have a look and see. Oh, it's very bright, isn't it? It's almost neony. But I really like it. I've never used this on its own before. I usually use it mixing with other colours. I'm just going to sit back and see where I've missed. Maybe put another layer on places. notice I'm not worrying about going over the leaves it's because I'm not pressing that hard and they're all green at the end of the day there I'm gonna leave it like that I really like that I don't know if you can see it properly hang on let's move it down a little bit there we go so there's our little door I hope you had fun with that I would advise you if you're doing this door to do your um, if you're gonna do gemstones do them a different color um, blue, mm, emerald green, um, purple, p pink, something like that, even red, I think, maybe, yeah, red I think would be really good. They'll show up a lot better than my choice, which was the old black. So uh, there we go. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you had fun with that one and enjoyed it, and uh, happy colouring. <laughs>